3,000 health tech or digital health ventures have been launched across Asia Pacific. And according to Galen Growth Asia, more than two and a half billion U.S. dollars in funding went towards these initiatives in 2016 alone. Experts believe these figures reflect the growing healthcare concerns around Asia and hope that technology can play a part, a vital part in solving them. Here to tell us more are uh, Julian De Salaberry, uh, Managing Director and founder of Galen Growth Asia, and Nawal Roy, founder and CEO of Hallmask. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much Morning. for coming in. Uh, Julian, let's start with you. <clears throat> can you give us a better understanding what is health tech? You know, can you maybe tell us what it encompasses, please? So health tech is, by its label, really, the conversion of tech with health. Um, we at Galen Growth Asia believe it's really an unprecedented opportunity to transform healthcare in the region. Um, we see a lot of it in the street with apps on our phone, uh, watches, smartwatches, etc. That's more the consumer end. But what you're seeing is really a revolution across the entire value chain of healthcare. So doctors are changing their way of operating. Uh, we're seeing hospitals changing the way in which they manage patients, for example. All the way back to clinical trials, where we're now seeing large drug firms really just running their clinical trials as new products very, very differently. Uh, and so it really is making a big difference to the way in which healthcare can be addressed or more specifically the issues that healthcare in Asia uh, does, does face. So why is this adoption rate uh, taking off faster in Asia than in Europe and the US? So it's a very good question. Um, what we're seeing from the data coming through, the one you just mentioned, and incidentally we think that it'll be exceeded yet again in 2017 based on our estimates, um, we're seeing a very vibrant ecosystem that is probably akin to the US and definitely well ahead of what Europe is demonstrating. I think there are a number of phenomena that are driving that. One is one common to the whole world, which is entrepreneurs with a solution to solve a problem mm -hmm. are able to build a solution that is becoming more affordable, but also able to build a business that is able to enter into healthcare. In the past, there's always billions to, to discover a new drug. Now you can bring a solution to the table that's costing a great deal less. I think mixed in with that, we're seeing much more by way of VC or funding coming in to actually support these entrepreneurs to become bigger, faster, stronger. And Nawal will share a bit more about that in terms of yeah, what his so, journey is. Yeah. yeah, tell us about your product, Hallmask. It sounds fascinating. So Hallmask is essentially a chronic disease platform. We started our flagship product, Glycoleap. Glycoleap is a disease management program for diabetes. Essentially, it's a health coach in your pocket someone who helps you to guide continuously to manage the disease and bring the sugar level to a level. How does it do that though? So essentially we ask people to take a picture of their food that they eat, they take their weight, they take their glucose level and essentially by all that we have a health coach on the back end which is continuously monitoring and guiding you slowly and slowly. Mm -hmm. So it's a very high frequency, low touch event of guidance over a period of time and that is how we manage to bring the disease under control. That's, that's so don't your, uh, the users of this app have to key in a lot of their own personal data as one of the challenge making sure that uh, this personal information is kept secure? Yes. So one, I mean, we certainly never compromise the security of the data. That's number one. Number two, essentially, we are looking at their lifestyle choices. You know, food habit is the biggest issue for diabetes. You know, and if you are able to manage the food habit, then essentially you are able to control your sugar level to a significant level. Of course. And that is what we try to do the most. Yeah. Okay. You know, we always talk about these uh, incredible uh, media devices that we have, but there's also VR, there's AR, there's AI. AI yeah. Especially when it comes to AI, it's, it's going to help us in, in a tremendous way because it will be looking at, at a much faster speed at curing diseases for us, don't you think? Absolutely. So AI is a very broad term to describe a number of new computational uh, changes that we're seeing in a way in which data is being analyzed. Uh, we're starting to see a lot of that come through in healthcare as we're seeing in other verticals. Um, for example, radiology is being substantially transformed in a way in which image recognition is being dealt with. We're also seeing an awful lot of AI come through in diagnostic support type tools, so enabling healthcare professionals to arrive at more accurate, faster type diagnosis and supporting them in the way in which they're managing patients. So that volume of data we're seeing generated by all these uh, devices that we're carrying as well as by health systems such as hospitals, um, we're able to start deriving much better value out of those. And I've previously mentioned clinical trials, but we're starting to see um, medical research transformed as well by the ability to crunch all that data in a much more, uh, in a faster way, but a more uniform way as well. Are there any other um, outstanding health innovations that you've seen so far or, you're, or that are in gestation right now and you're waiting 
to see them explode onto the scene in a few years' time. So I think we're starting to see already quite a few of those uh, exciting new ideas bubble through at various levels of maturity. You're absolutely right. Uh, changing things such as the way in which we sell insurance, I mean, health insurance, which mm-hmm. is obviously a, a very important uh, driver in the way in which healthcare transforms in Asia. Um, it's worth mentioning another uh, homegrown um, a health tech startup in Asia um, who actually recently just won the Gain and Growth Asia 2017 Most Innovative Health Tech Startup. as a little startup called Bioformi, which I think yesterday announced its uh, Series A 5 million US dollar raise. Um, and they're using AI to look at the way in which patients which have been discharged from hospital are being managed in the okay. future. In other words, how do you stop that patient returning back to right. hospital by risk categorizing that patient and therefore um, addressing the patients at high risk earlier so that uh, they are not uh, stepping back into the hospital, mm-hmm. for example. Now, let's bring you back into the discussion. Look, yes. you know, you're doing <clears throat> tremendous things with uh, diabetes and it's type yes. 2 diabetes, yes. right? Yes. What else uh, will be on the cards uh, for you? Are you going to fight more chronic illnesses? Uh, we are already working in cardiovascular uh-huh. uh, with the National Heart Center here. We also work in the mental health area with Duke University in USA. How so? Uh, so essentially what we have is one of the largest mental health electronic medical record system. It's a single therapy medical record system, and hence we work with all the mental health institutions to manage their portfolio of patients and the doctors that they look at it. Can, can I ask whether we'll one day all walk around with these electronic chips in our body, where, where, where it'll be able to register exactly what's going on with you, and if something goes awry, it'll be able to trigger off social media devices like or having doctors. having your personal robot. Yeah, so Baymax. Exactly. So it's in you and it's already monitoring mm-hmm. you. Is that something that's on the cards or is it already so, a development? I think some of the, it already, some of them exist. Some, you'll, you'll find uh, some, some uh, I guess, demonstrations of that in pilot stage around the world. Uh, biosensors appear in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Um, non-search, for example, that we'll see our clothes, for example, start having biosensors woven into them being able to start uh, capturing data on our, our health, for example. Um, some companies are developing a little tattoo you wear on your skin. So I don't know what the final format will look like, yeah. but certainly we'll see a great deal more by where biosensors apply directly to us as a person to gather that contextual data and that health data and able, therefore, us to manage our health in a much more proactive way. Do you think on the flip side, if, uh, you know, you, you, yes. for, for example, for Hallmask, you're empowering these individuals to take charge of the management of di- diabetes or cardiovascular diseases. Uh, would they end up playing doctor themselves because too much power is given back to them? Not really, but uh, it's like it's the same way that we all of do our financial planning. You know, okay. when we need yeah. more dedicated planning, then we hire a professional. Mm-hmm. Whenever we need a dedicated expert opinion, that's the time. You know, the hospitals and the doctors will come in. But it's a great complementary tool. For the doctors, it's a great complementary tool for people who want to manage their own disease and things of that nature. Once it becomes very chronic, at that time, certainly the consultation with the doctor becomes very important. But at the earliest stage of the disease, when you are diagnosed and when you have got the disease, at that particular stage, managing it on their own is highly possible. We're also looking at a time where uh, if you look at health technology, we could be seeing robots operating on us, uh, especially when it comes to very critical, very dangerous type operations and uh, the success rate of, of robots could probably have high, a much higher success rate than, than a human. Uh, mm-hmm. Is that already on the cards? Is it happening? Yeah, that is, that's happening. So we're already seeing robotics surgery, entering yeah. surgery, mm-hmm. even quite complex surgery, uh, largely because we're seeing, we know that robots are, are more accurate in the way in which they make an incision, in the way in which they actually address a particular issue inside the human body. Mm-hmm. They'll never, I don't think, ever operate alone, solo, um, but they will uh, be greatly supported by, you know, by the surgeon themselves. Uh, in fact, the military are uh, experimenting with us in terms of how do you do surgery remotely in the battlefield yes. whilst the surgeon is actually somewhere else. the back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because, of course, they're a, a high-valued uh, resource for the military. But just very quickly then, before we close, uh, what are the challenges do you guys see in this uh, health tech industry up ahead? So I think uh, uh, one of the biggest challenges is certainly the adoption. As we progress, this adoption is one of the key challenges that we are continuously facing with. People are continuously wondering as to, you know, whether it is worth it or not worth it. So there is a lot of business model challenges are also there, and hence there's a lot of business model innovations are happening. But having said that, I think the delta or the changes are happening at very fast pace, mm-hmm. and all of these challenges are worth tackling one by one as it goes along. That's what makes the journey very interesting. Okay. And do you have a final word on this, Julian? 
Well, the one I would recommend, which I recommend to any entrepreneur or, or investor for that matter, which is make sure you're solving a problem, not necessarily getting excited about a technology. Yeah, because yes. you know, we were talking about first, this in yeah. by 2022, uh, you're looking at the health tech industry dollars. being worth $400 billion. So a lot of people are like, just want to make a, a quick buck and not worry about uh, anything else. Thank you so much for coming in, guys, and for Pleasure. that insightful conversation with us. Thank this you morning. very much. We've been speaking with Julian de Salaberry of Galen Growth Asia and Nawal Roy of Hallmusk.